2020 Small Workshop Tour, Part 2, My Cheap Tools and My Hand Tools. Hola, Woodworkers, Paul Carson here, Small Workshop Guy. Recently I released a 2020 Shop Tour video, and in that tour I didn't have time to discuss any of my tools, and I thought some people might be interested in what I'm using. There's a theory out there that says, buy once, cry once. Uh, I think that's a fallacious theory. If you're well set financially and you're planning on doing something as a profession, then I think, yes, you can go ahead and make an investment in the nicest tool. Just make sure you have a really good business plan and that you are, in fact, going to make enough money to pay that off. But if you're a DIY dad, got family, got responsibilities, got kids you got to educate, uh, you haven't, you're a beginner, you haven't really worked out your style yet, then I think it's a mistake to go buy a bunch of expensive tools. What happens if I load up my whole workshop with really expensive power tools and then I decide what I like to do the most is work with my hands with chisels and bench planes and be a Paul Sellers? Well, then I've got a lot of expensive equipment I didn't really use. Plus, you don't know which things you really need. Are you going to be a router table expert and use that heavily? Is it your table saw? You know, do you do a, is the drill press critical to you? Do, you? do you have to have a top-notch bandsaw? You'll develop the, that kind of information over time as you start building things and decide what you like to build. If you're going to turn pins on a lathe, that's a whole different set of equipment than if you're going to build beds. So anyway, that's my point. I think I spent uh, I spent. For my bandsaw, my drill press, my thickness planer, my uh, sanding belt, my air filtration system, my sharpening uh, grinder for slow speed grinder, similar to the Tormek, and my 8 inch cheap jointer, I spent about $2,000. And I could easily have spent $10,000. Now, I am going to replace some things, but that's okay. There's a market for used tools especially inexpensive ones, not much of a market. You'll get, you know, 30, 40 cents on a dollar if you're lucky with a little effort if you hold out long enough. Just don't take that first bargain offer. So anyway, uh, you can sell tools and upgrade them. Just figure out what you need first. That's my theory. So I am not a uh, buy once, cry once advocate. Let's get on with the tool tour. Rolled out here in the driveway, I've got my pop-up workbench. That is a set of uh, saw stallions, which are uh, two saw horses uh, made out of three-quarter inch plywood. And they all have match-fit dovetail grooves everywhere in those saw horses. And then there is a top for those and a side panel to make it into a pop-up workbench. When you don't need it to be up and running as a workbench, or as your sawhorses, then it collapses into a footprint like this. Got it on a little cart, and it just rolls into the corner of the garage. All right. Now I know today's generation all want really, really quick everything. So I'll try not to talk in my southern accent, and I'll try not to dawdle. So here we go. My first and uh, most prized power tool is my uh, SawStop PCS30. Uh, 1.75 horsepower. I'll try to give you my uh, rating of my different tools from a scale of 1 to 10. 1 to 10 in relationship to a DIY, relatively novice woodworker of only several years of experience. Not a professional cabinet maker and not a contractor. And so that's me, DIY, several years of experience, just having fun in my workshop as a hobby. So, from a scale of 1 to 10, my this one is a 10 or a 12 or something like that. Uh, I really, really think it's important to have that safety feature on there, which is the brake. Uh, I'd rather pay $180 to replace the brake and replace the blade than I'd like to then spend $180,000 replacing my thumb and fingers. As a DIY guy, uh, I've got quite a number of when products. I think this Wen bandsaw, I believe, cost me uh, under $300. I went to a video once that said top 10 bandsaws, and then it came up and listed this one at number one at the end, after it listed all the 14 and 17 inches. So this is just a 10-inch 
a bandsaw. It has met my needs. It's not, I haven't used it for resawing at all. I have a little bit of problem with it tracking, but I'm generally just trying to do kind of a rough cut and then I'll sand things down. It is a two speed. Uh, for a DIY uh, guy, I, I would give this a, about a five, but for $290, that kind of raises the scale, doesn't it? Then I have a Wen uh, drill press. Very happy with that. I haven't found any restrictions where uh, it wouldn't work for me. I'm sure professionals have some problems with inexpensive tools like this. Again, under $300. So I give this, uh, uh, you know, a good eight or nine. It meets all of my needs in this workshop. Let's continue with the WEN products. I have a WEN uh, air filtration system. Probably you could spend a few more dollars and get uh, one that's got more CFM, but uh, this one works for me and it's got a remote. So I just put that on a Velcro by the door so I don't lose it. Uh, as far as air filtration, meets my needs as far as I know, so I'm gonna give it a 10. Then I have a Wen thickness planer. Little 12, 12 and a half inch, uh, six inch uh, up and down capacity, but most of them have a six inch capacity. Uh, I forget what I paid for it, but somewhere under $300, I think. It, I don't get any snipe on it. If you kind of support the workpiece as you're putting it in, angling it down a little bit and support the workpiece when it's coming out, I really don't get snipe. It works perfectly good. Uh, I'd give it, you know, a, a six or seven uh, for my needs. I'm going to replace it with a DeWalt uh, thickness planer with a helical head. I don't know why. I just, everybody got one, so I got to have one, right? All right, I have a uh, Wen um, belt sander. That was all right. The only trouble I had was holding the uh, disc platform at 90 degrees, but after I put in a star washer in this little bitty minuscule uh, knob to hold it at the whatever degrees, it, it worked great. So I just needed more friction. Uh, you know, Works fine for what it is, as long as you know what it is, and that's just a small belt sander. Yeah, would I like to have a lot more big stuff? You bet, but I don't have room. All right, I got a little uh, slow speed grinder. When I do happen to drop my chisels and uh, need to kind of, don't want to do all the work by hand to get them back to a starting point, then I just use this one. It's a little knockoff. I think it's $120 or something. You can spend... Uh, 450 or $700 for your Tormek if you want to, but if you're a DIYer, you probably just need one of these little wind knockoffs. So I give that for what it's uh, needed for. I give that a good seven or eight. And I just went ahead and bought uh, some accessories that you would normally buy for a Tormek in order to hold the blades. So, hey, get your knockoff and then buy your really good quality accessories. All right, I don't think I have any other WEN uh, tools. Let me next go talk about my uh, Powermatic benchtop mortising machine. If I were to do it again, I would not get this. I've got two videos, one about how to set this up and one about tricks and techniques for use it. But the problem is when you want to cut some quick mortises and you've got to want them to be very precise, this is a cumbersome machine for trying to get those uh, mortising chisels right on your line and do a really nice fit. If you're going to do a lot of blind mortises, that's fine. Uh, this is a okay machine, but I would just say don't spend the money on this. You know, get better tools of some other type and then use your drill press or your hand drill to hog out your mortises or use your plunge router if they're just small half inch or three quarter inch mortises and just go that way and then if you're uh, square off your corners uh, really all this is doing is squaring your corners for you and it's a lot of overhead for that purpose so I would I would give that for what I want to do I would give that you know like a two as far as the quality of the machine I would certainly give it an eight or nine all right. 
Make sure when you get your power tools that you use the stands that you've got them on. Put a piece of plywood across all of the struts. I have added these uh, Bora uh, portable bases to all of my, uh, well, to several of my power tools. And then I just put plywood across the bottom, plywood across the middle. And then that gives me a kind of a place to store other stuff. What haven't we covered? Well, let's see. As far as bigger power tools, I have a inexpensive Ryobi, probably the first thing I bought, um, miter saw. Compound miter saw goes all directions. It's a sliding one. Problem with the slide is you need to have room in the back. So to use it, I actually have to pull it out a little bit and then use it. I'm going to replace that with a Bosch one that's got one of those, uh, I forget what they call those arms, but the arms that don't need any room behind the saw. I have that on a uh, thing I really like. It's a Bora Portimate, a miter saw station. The wings fold up. So if I wanted to get a support of my workpiece, this wing over here on the right folds up and uh, or comes up and then a little platform comes up to give me a level bed. And of course I can do the wing on the other side as well. So that, that allows me not to build a great big old dedicated miter station in my small one car garage. I haven't to date used a, a router table a lot. But I got this one from Ryobi. I thought, gee, I got a Ryobi, Ryobi router. That was my first one in there. And uh, I, <laughs> I don't like that one. That one's hard to adjust. But I've got it in here dedicated with a roundover bit and some other stuff. I'm going to build a custom cabinet for that. Take off these metal legs. And then have it where the cabinet, the top of the cabinet will come up. So I get easy access. So that's a future plan for me. As far as a, uh, an oscillating spindle sander, I've got one from Triton. That I think Wen puts out a comparable one. My uh, circular saw, corded, is a Milwaukee, uh, seven and a quarter inch, I think it is. And my corded, powerful, big drill is a DeWalt. Uh, I like both of those. Of course, they're corded, but I hardly ever am working on a job site because I don't work, so I don't have a job site. I just have my garage. My dust collection is a Shop Fox. It's kind of underpowered. I've got the uh, Rockler hoses on it. I've got a Rockler Cyclone top on there on top of a 32 gallon barrel. And so that Cyclone top gets 99.9% .9 of the chips and I hardly ever have to empty the bag. It's pretty much dedicated to the table saw, but I do have a supplemental hose here that I can quickly hook up to stretch over to the thickness planer when I'm using that. Some of the smaller power hand tools, I've got the, uh, I've got the Shaper Origin handheld portable CNC router. Uh, that's fairly new acquisition for me. Very, very expensive. Mine cost me with uh, warranty and sales tax and delivery and everything, uh, $3,425. But who's counting? Uh, and then I have the uh, DS500 um, Festool Domino. Love that. Router-wise... Let's, I had the Ryobi originally that's in the router table, a little trim router. Uh, this is a rigid trim router, so just kind of a permanent, you know, round over bit in there. I've got a Bosch Colt, little handheld uh, router. It's also got a plunge base, and also the edge guide will work for that. Uh, I kind of decided that I wanted a half inch collet, and... Obviously, none of those do it, so I upgraded to a Bosch. Uh, I think it's called MRC, meaning uh, it's got the package that I bought with it, which included the, uh, the plunge base, and then I also have the edge guide. And actually, at one point, I thought I had a bit stuck in there permanently, and I had to get something done, and so in a hurry, I bought a, re, a refurbished uh, Bosch, and got that delivered from Amazon in a couple of days. And, and then lo and behold, I got the bit out. So now I have two of them. 
identical. I will probably put uh, one of them in my router table since I'm so dissatisfied with my Ryobi router that is in that table. One thing that I would do differently uh, when it comes to like a compressor, and I'm not into any H, whatever you call it, HVLC uh, spraying or whatever. So I have this little uh, Porter Cable uh, pancake compressor. And then I have the pneumatic tools that go with that, the various size uh, brad nailers and staplers. What I would do if I were to go back again is I wouldn't spend any money on those things and I wouldn't have the pancake compressor. I would instead, and I, and I wouldn't do the 12 volt uh, Milwaukee drill driver and those tools. What I would do is get either the, um, the uh, Milwaukee set of 18 volt, uh, higher quality brushless, uh, you know, drill driver, and and uh, and then I would start buying like the uh, cordless circular saw from the same manufacturer. I think you pick a platform. Uh, the two favorites I like are Milwaukee and DeWalt. So I would pick a platform and then have my drill driver, my uh, reciprocating saw, you know, all of my different tools on that same platform using those same batteries. And one of those items would be the stapler or the brad nailer, just battery operated. All right. Uh, along the top up there, as I said, I got my pneumatic tools. I've got a Ryobi jigsaw. I have my 12 volt Milwaukee uh, drill driver and impact driver. And then I have some old Ryobis uh, that I probably sell in a garage sale. That, I think, is all of my larger power tools. And again, the ones I'm going to replace is probably the bandsaw with a 14 or 17-inch bandsaw and probably the thickness planer. And I may sell the mortising machine. When it comes to uh, tools on my hand wall, one of the most important ones is the fire extinguisher. But... Just a whole variety of measuring devices. I, I do like the Sterrett combination squares. I got both the 6 inch and the 12 inch. Various uh, measuring devices and stuff. When it comes to my bench planes, uh, the far left one here is just an old Stanley number 5 contractor level. Don't use it for anything. And then I've got a Wood River number 7. I've got a um, Lee Nielsen number 62 low angle. Uh, plane and then I've got the uh, I've got a Sweetheart Stanley sweetheart, but since I got a Lee Nelson number four I took my Stanley sweetheart number four and I rounded over the blade So that is now what you would call a scrub plane and then I really really love my uh, Lee Nielsen number four and then I've got a Lee Nielsen uh, router plane and then I have the Lee Nielsen little block plane. So those are my bench planes. Uh, some of the typical Japanese saws. My chisels are uh, my two favorite ones here are in the middle. Those are my two uh, Veritas half inch and one inch. But then I have a whole set of Narex, uh, you know, and I think there's one, two, three, four, five, six of them came in a set for like $85. So they're obviously, they're not the most expensive in the world. Bought myself a set of mortising chisels. I only needed one, I think. I didn't need a whole set. A little couple angular chisels. And then a garbage, uh, you know, blue handle there. You know, inch and a half that I use for stuff. My mallets. I've got a brand new mallet from Nathan Fout. Back in Pennsylvania, he made that for me. Uh, goes along with my Samurai Carpenter workbench, style-wise. And uh, I think that's probably all I talk about there. I'm not going to get in discussion of clamps. Clamps are clamps are clamps. These uh, heavy-duty uh, DeWalt uh, bar clamps are amongst my favorite. And then I've got more DeWalt bar clamps, too, that are a little less sturdy or less power. 
University of Kansas Jayhawk. That's where I went from kindergarten through graduate school, left the, and went there on a golf scholarship, and left there in 1968 to work for IBM in San Francisco. Started my own company in 1975, turned that over to my sons in 2014, and been in my workshop ever since. My security camera is from Amazon. It's actually an Amazon company called Blink, B-L-I-N-K. Really cool. You, you get a little uh, controller device and then you can buy add-on cameras. Well, there's the big picture. Uh, I still got teenagers in the house, so I got a bike up there. Uh, I do some filming. As obviously, you can see I'm using a little... Uh, iPhone for this film with a with a gimbal they call it gimbal gimbal uh, to keep that a little bit smoother when I pan around but I got a bunch of bars across the top of my uh, workshop so that I can hang tripods and stuff so it starts to look a little kludgy but that's all right yeah, the question is can you get any work done all right well that's my tool tour got any questions let me know Got any uh, comments about any of these tools? Just share with my uh, handful of subscribers. Leave a comment. Have a good day. Stay out of the hospital. And be safe in your workshop. A little trim router. <clears throat> Let me try that again. A little trim router. <laughs> oh, well. Maybe I can't say that word.